In this video tutorial, we're going to look at how we use graphical techniques in order to solve non-linear simultaneous equations. So first of all, let's begin with two equations. The first equation that we're going to use is 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus y equals 4. And the second equation that we're going to use is 15x minus 3y equals 12. Now these equations here, equation 1 is a cubic equation. We know it's a cubic because the highest power of x is 3. And the second equation we have is a linear equation because there's no x squareds or x cubes in that particular equation. Now for these to be simultaneous, there will be values of x and y that make equation 1 true. But those same sets of x and y values will also need to make equation 2 true. So when we solve simultaneous equations, x and y that makes equation 1 true will also make equation 2 true. Now it's quite likely that when we have non-linear simultaneous equations, or at least one equation that's non-linear, the likelihood is that there's going to be more than one solution to this. So as we plot these out, we're potentially looking for two or more solutions to the equations. Now the first step, as always, is to rearrange each of these equations to make y the subject. So let's take equation 1 first of all, and we've got... 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus y equals 4. Now what I want to do is I want to get y on its own. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could subtract 3x cubed from each side. Then we could add 2x squared to each side. And then we could change the sign of both sides. So that's a three-step process. But in this case, probably the easier first step is to begin by adding y to each side. And you'll see why this is easier in a moment. So our left hand side is going to become 3x cubed minus 2x squared. Well minus y plus y is just 0. And our right hand side is going to equal 4 plus y because we've added y to each side. Well hopefully you can see now there's only one more step that we need to go through in order to get y on its own and that is subtracting 4 from each side of the equation. So what we'll get on the left hand side is we'll get 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4 equals y. And normally what we would do is we'd put the y on the left hand side. So just swapping the left and right hand sides over, we get y equals 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4. I'm going to call that equation 3. Now we're going to go through exactly the same process for equation 2. Now equation 2 says that 15x minus 3y equals 12, and we want to get y on its own. So first of all, I'm going to subtract 15x from each side of that equation. Subtracting 15x from the left-hand side leaves me with minus 3y, and subtracting 15x from the right-hand side leaves me with minus 15x plus 12. Now the final step that I need to do to each side to get y on its own is divide each side of that equation by minus 3. It makes no difference here that this coefficient is negative. If we've got minus 3 lots of y and we want y on its own, then we need to divide by minus 3. So dividing the left side by minus 3 gives us y because minus 3y divided by minus 3 is just y. And our right hand side becomes minus 15 over minus 3x plus 12 over minus 3. Now we can simplify that because minus 15 divided by minus 3 is just 5. Now you can do that on your calculators if you prefer. So we have 5x and 12 divided by minus 3 is minus 4. Now that equation there I'm going to call equation 4. So all we've done is we've taken our two original equations and we've rearranged each of those to make y the subject. Now it's these two equations, equation 3 and equation 4, that we're going to plot in order to find the solutions to these pairs of simultaneous equations. So up in the top left hand corner here we have the two equations that we need to plot. We have equation 3 which is represented by a y subscript 3 here, of 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4. That's the first equation that we need to plot. 
And the second equation we need to plot, equation 4, represented by a subscript 4 here, is the y equals 5x minus 4 equation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot both of those equations and what we're looking for is the point where those two graphs intersect. Those intersection points will give us the x and y coordinates of each of our solutions. So let's begin first of all by plotting equation 3. Now once again I've taken a slight shortcut. Here are the x values that I've been inputting, minus 2, minus 1.5, minus 1 and so on. And these are the y values that are generated by inputting those x values into equation 3 here. Okay, so if you were doing this manually, you'd put x equals minus 2 into the equation to generate your value of y. Then you'd put x equals minus 1.5 into the equation to generate your second value of y and so on. I've then repeated that process for equation 4, inputting the same values of x. When x is minus 2, it yields a y value of minus 14 and so on. Okay, so generally you would do this manually. I've done this through formulas on Excel just to speed up the process um, to get to the point of this video. So first of all then, for, if we plot equation 3, we've got when x equals minus 2, y equals minus 36. When x equals minus 1.5, y equals minus 18.6. When x equals minus 1, y equals minus 9. When x equals minus a half, y equals minus 4.9. When x equals 0, y equals minus 4. When x equals a half, y equals minus 4.1. When x equals 1, y equals minus 3. When x equals 1.5, y equals 1.6 and when x equals 2, y equals 12. I'm then going to do the best I can to add a smooth curve through those points. And then we can begin plotting the second equation. So for our second equation, when x equals minus 2, y equals minus 14. When x equals minus 1.5, y equals minus 11.5. When x equals minus 1, y equals minus 9. And we see there an intersect. When x equals minus a half, y equals minus 6.5. When x equals 0, y equals minus 4. Again, we see an intersect. When x equals half, y equals minus 1.5. When x equals 1, y equals 1. When x equals 1.5, y equals 3.5. And when x equals 2, y equals 6. This one here is a straight line graph. Okay, now what we can see is there's actually three intersection points here. We have an intersection point here when x equals minus 1. That represents this line here. We have an intersect here when x equals 0, which is this line here, and we have an intersect point somewhere over here, which is when x equals 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, roughly 1.7. So, our solutions to this equation is when x equals minus 1, y equals minus 9, so we've got x equals minus 1, y equals minus 9. That's solution 1. We have a second solution, which is when x equals 0, y equals minus 4, 
And we have a third solution up here, which is when x equals 1.7, y equals roughly 6. Okay, so our first set of solutions, when x equals minus 1, y equals minus 9. Our second set of solutions, when x equals 0, y equals minus 4. And our third set of solutions, when x equals 1.7, y equals 6. Each of those sets of solutions would solve the original simultaneous equations 1 and 2. I'll just show you these graphs plotted on Excel just so we can double check the accuracy of these, particularly this one here where we don't have an integer or a whole number. So all we're looking at here is the same sets of data that I plotted in the previous part of the video, but this time I've plotted them using the insert scatter graphs function on Excel. Now once again we see three intersection points, x equals minus 1, and we know that when x equals minus 1, y equals minus 9, and we know that from this line of our data table. We know that when x equals 0, y equals minus 4, and again we know that from this line of our data table. The point that wasn't an integer or didn't have an integer value for x was this point over here. Now we can see a little more accurately on this view that x equals closer to 1.65 and the y value is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this point here is actually going to be x equals 1.65 and y equals 4. So by plotting these on Excel we're actually able to overcome some of those human errors and get a much more accurate representation of our results for the simultaneous equations.